Hi, Marius. Good to see everyone. Okay, do you wanna do you wanna ask people with cameras to join? That would be great, yes. Oh, Alexandra, you are here. Can we see you, maybe? Oh, she muted herself. You muted, Alexandra? She muted herself. Okay, so if anyone wants to join us with their camera, we would be delighted. Just use the raise your hand feature and we'll invite you to, to the family list. Okay, I see people raising hands, that's great. Hello, hello. It is so good to see so many familiar faces. It is wonderful. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> oh, good evening. Yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, actually, only people in California, like Conal Lee and I, we are so far, are uh, good morning. And Oh yes, you and Joe are also good morning. Uh, wonderful to see you. Uh, I can hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you too. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Okay, guys. I guess we can start. So, Marius, Michael, welcome so, again. Well, yes. Do it. Thank very much for uh, for organizing this for us um, so we really appreciate prosoma for doing this for us because i was not able to manage everything that was going on so and of course we have big holidays we have both um, uh, easter and passover at the same time uh, so the, today is the fourth day of passover and uh, and the sunday easter so uh, thank you that still you found you 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 are joining us and that is absolutely great we really like looking at you all and seeing your faces because first of all i know many of you and it is it is wonderful and those that i don't know i like to connect the name because i i sometimes know your names but don't know faces so it's so good to connect faces with names and also in this time of uh, isolation, quarantine, and physical distancing, um, it is nice to strengthen our uh, social connections. And, and that is something that I, will, that you, I repeat at the beginning of each of our uh, workshops, that, that we are not about social distancing, but physical distancing. We want to reduce uh, uh, social distance, right? So uh, today we will be talking about uh, really uh, uh, applying uh, laughter in difficult times. And yes, and many of you may say there's, there's nothing to uh, laugh about, but a uh, but there is, we will teach you a form of laughter that you can use to strengthen your immune system, to improve your quality of life, even when there's nothing to laugh about. There's nothing funny around you. The fact is that I, I use humor. You, mostly it is amusing to me, not anybody else. Uh, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I have such a habit. And I developed this habit from my a mentor and good friend and colleague, and Michael know, knows him very well too, knew him very well too, uh, Dr. Carl Simonton, who was a re radiation oncologist who in 1971 developed this program to address also emotional aspects of, of, of um, going through cancer. And since 73, he was including also uh, uh, support people in this program. And he would laugh and actually, in this program, he would always emphasize that play and laughter are not ele electives. These are mandatory, 
right? Because he emphasized that whenever we have any type of a problem, we stop playing. That is the first symptom of stress. When we have any type of stress, we stop playing. And, and, uh, and, and he would emphasize that, no, what is most important is that we need to play, that play, play is absolutely important because it increases our energy and increases our vitality. And yes, um, our energy and our vitality uh, are necessary for, for dealing with any type of problem, interpersonal problem, financial problem, uh, work problem, uh, health problem, uh, quarantine problem that comprise other problems. So, so yes, yeah, so first credit to uh, Carl Simonton and Michael. Uh, you remember we had, we always giggled with Carl and Carl had difficulty finishing his jokes because he would laugh at his own jokes so hard and some people hate it. Right, so, so this is Carl Simonton, our uh, mentor, and yes, and we we did a lot. And here's Carl Simonton in the middle of my Beat the Odds group, one of the early groups. I think it was 2004 uh, that I after I started after we moved to uh, California, but I started doing these groups as a resident in pathologist in uh, 19. 88 so i've been doing it for 32 years uh and th uh, that is carl uh so we were sailing that is the reason we, we have the same t-shirts and and we were sailing in polish mazurian lakes um which is the northeastern part of poland and the lakes are connected and and, and what happened we were laughing so hard because and they kicked us out of the boat because we were rocking the boat too much. Um, uh, so so we, we really enjoyed uh, laughing and we didn't stop laughing. So. so I wanted to also, thank you for sharing the screen. Um, I wanted to also thank my other mentors um, who contributed to this uh, uh, program and uh, who, uh, because also Maxi Moldsby who developed the cognitive behavioral part here. And Michael and I, we also uh, worked and trained with Maxim Moldsby. And so it happened that, that when Ma Maxim Moldsby developed rational behavioral therapy and, and when we met in New Mexico, we, we, our visa required to, 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 to work in underserved area. Michael also had the reason because they were repaying his student loans. And we met in New Mexico and it turned out that he did his dissertation on rational behavioral therapy. So of course we clicked immediately. So thank you, Michael. So Maxim Oldsby, um, Carl Simonton, also very important. Uh, we have um, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, David Burns, uh, who developed the empathy part that we'll be using and, and emotions, uh, list of emotions that we'll be going through. Um, Peter Fenner, who taught me uh, unconditioned awareness and, and we'll be doing unconditioned laughter. Uh, and also um, uh, Daniel Minty, uh, who uh, works with me and uh, David Burns on, on refining this approach and making it more self-help. And with Michael, uh, we are we are uh, refining it. And also uh, doctor and professor Eva Wojtyna from uh, Poland. She wrote a chapter on group rational behavior therapy uh, with me uh, many years ago. So I would like to encourage all of you to have a, a pencil and paper uh, handy so, so we can take some notes because uh, these notes, uh, uh, we, we will eventually you will get an app that Andrew is working on <laughs> so you'll be able to go through all those things uh, without paper um, it was going to be web-based so it is going to be accessible also on your uh, laptop or your iPad or iPhone or um, or any smartphone Android based too so 
And I also wanted to welcome uh, Alexandra Marcinkowska from uh, Bedford University uh, in the UK. Uh, she just joined our team and she was going to call it this workshop tomorrow with me in Polish. So, so, so we will be talking here about lifestyle change and many of you, uh, you know, might have listened to, oh, wow, it is so, um, so, uh, so, so uh, people give you uh, prescriptions, oh, how to lose weight, how to build muscle, how to do that. And in five days or a week or whatever, so, or uh, three minutes a day, or whatever. The thing is, lifestyle modification is an inherently challenging. And I have actually uh, could give credit to some other people, but, my, but Andrew is uh, wanting me to move forward faster with the theory, at least before we go to practice. Uh, so, and so, uh, and so the, uh, so really we will be talking about lifestyle change and this, and here we will be talking about lifestyle change of something pleasant like laughter and, and you will see, and you will demonstrate in this workshop how you are going to resist that. So, so because resistance to any change is inherent to any change. So, um, uh, and uh, yes, so we, we, and so we, so that is a lifestyle thing. So another part that we would like to do is that maybe uh, uh, have a show of hands of those who are already on the panel. And we have, so maybe we could have like, uh, eight people uh, who would like to do a group process that we'll be doing today. Because today we are also going to be doing a special cognitive behavioral group process that we'll be looking at our emotions and our beliefs and understanding how we can learn more about ourselves uh, from our emotions. So, so we will, and yes, and uh, actually the, whoever is going to volunteer is going to be uh, getting a bonus. A bonus is going to be a, being a beta tester for our uh, for our app when it's going to come up. Uh, so uh, so we will be really appreciative if you could join us. Um, so yes. So Colleen uh, agreed. Yes. So if you could yes. put. Uh, if you, whoever would like to be uh, Alexandra, okay, if you guys could put in your names, uh, Konali, I see. So if you could put your names in the uh, chat box. Um, oh, Susan, great. So whoever wants to be uh, just uh, on the group, just text group and your name and we will, um, uh, through, uh, through the chat, chat is at the bottom and this way we will get it, okay? Perfect. Uh, so we, we are collecting people. Uh, perfect. So we will have, uh, we need eight people to, to, to be in that group. So, um, and of these people, we'll have one, uh, one, uh, and for those who want to be in the group, we will ask you to uh, turn on your cameras because we would like to see your faces. Uh, and again, we will not plan on uh, opening any very personal issues. We want to keep this um, uh, uh, learning the process that eventually will be um, uh, uh, that eventually will be applying to yourself. Because once you go through this process, you will be able to do it. Um, so, and whoever is going to be the, 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 uh, the presenting person, like we will do group process, the one, one of the eight will be the presenting. We will ask uh, for you. So this person is going to be an expert. So we will see, you will see how the process in our therapy is so good for the person who is presenting their problem, which is going to be a virtual problem, right? The laughter problem. So, uh, 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 Michael, um, what do you think about our pro process as in others, cognitive behavior therapies? 
Well, hi everyone. Um, happy Easter, happy Passover. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. This is a strange, one of the stranger holidays um, that I remember where there's not much celebrating. And as Mario said, um, our families used to spend a lot of Easter's together. And um, so it's nice to be able to spend it with him and to spend with you, the new friends. Um, so let me say that uh, cognitive behavior um, group therapy traditionally in a cognitive behavioral therapy is really um, it's kind of working with doing individual therapy within a group is often how it comes out to be maybe get some input here and there but really it's the clinician working with whoever is working on the problem what's nice about this model that we're going to work on is it's really trying to employ the expertise of everyone in the group as we move through the five questions as we look at healthy semantics the different aspects we want input from everyone yes the the person whose issue it is we're talking about is the expert in their own area and they have final veto power but we really want it to be a creative process in which we're amplifying meaning around us instead of just trying to reduce meaning to a, a simple thing so i think you'll see it's a little different but um much more uh um inviting much more um enjoyable for everyone in the group rather than just listen to that guy over there talk about his problems again Thank you very much, Michael, um, for succinctly really uh, bringing this to what, uh, what we really want to do. So, um, uh, um, so let me uh, go to, through the, um, the, the theory quickly. Uh, um, so can you show the, uh, the slides? <clears throat> So yes, yeah, so so uh, Carl Simonton was the person who not only was teaching laughter but also was a good example of laughter um, because he, uh, uh, he he was actually practicing it. But the first person to really uh, write about health value of uh, laughter was Norman Cousins. Um, so Norman Cousins was was not a physician. It had nothing to do with health, but he uh, he had uh, ankylosing spondylitis, a degenerative disease of the spinal column, and and very painful. And there was no treatment for it. Um, uh, and in, it was in 1970s. And he noticed that that his pain would go away if he laughed. So laughter was. Uh, uh, so he started watching f funny movies, and he would watch those funny movies uh, uh, as much as he could. So actually, his family kicked him out, and he put himself in the hotel. And remember, it was the 70s, so they didn't have streaming. They didn't have DVDs. They didn't have v VHSs. Uh, he had those big reels of film that he would put on a projector and, put it, and project them on the screen, and he would laugh. And he noticed that he could sleep better and everything improved. And eventually, his illness went away. So he had less and less pain. The episodes of pain were less frequent. And suddenly, his spine, he could move his spine without pain. And, and then he had no evidence of disease um, after a period of practicing laughter. So he wrote this book, uh, Anatomy of an Illness. And next slide, please. <coughs> so, the, But the first person to really uh, approach humor uh, in a scientific way was William Fry and he started his um, uh, scientific journal of humor. Um, and, but the person who published the most on the health value of laughter uh, was um, actually, a, next slide please, um, a colleague of mine that I met through Carl Simonton, Dr. Lee Burke. Uh, he's at Loma Linda and wonderful guy. And, he he is really doing a lot of fun things because he's teaching the health value of laughter, but also health value of chocolate. So, <laughs> so I really like that, uh, particularly that my daughter, middle daughter, makes vegan chocolates, even though she is a vet student. But uh, so, Doctor um, Barak, he he really showed that how our immune system, and we'll be coming to that to our immune system. Uh, a lot uh, throughout the uh, uh, practice today. And next slide, please. So, and uh, there was a recent 
uh, article in the current psychiatry about uh, about actually laughter being also a good psychiatric medicine. You see, what they notice is that uh, humans begin to laugh at approximately four months of age. And you see, what type of sense of humor we have at the four months of age? We have no sense of humor, right? So the laughter that we have is unconditional. I am healthy, if a baby is healthy and has healthy parents and has all the food in there, so they are laughing just naturally. So we are talking about us in our practice, we'll, getting, we'll be getting touch in that natural laughter. So uh, that just arises um, in healthy babies naturally. And it turns out that, that babies and children laugh on average 400 times per day. Why adults uh, on average laugh uh, maybe uh, five times per day. So uh, also uh, uh, tickling a baby uh, or you know tickling or just laughing with the baby or f f uh, this interaction between the baby and the parent and both laughing is actually it seems like it is the first bond that people develop uh, with their parents so uh, so th and and it, we even know how it is mediated what transmitters um, are involved and also others um, uh, non-human animals are also known to to laugh and then Dr. Lee Burke uh, published a lot of on that, and he noticed that the the cell, special cells that are virus um, uh, killing cells and um, uh, like natural killing killer cells, and also cytotoxic T cells, their activity is much stronger the more we laugh. So, so and we will be actually doing it today. We'll be strengthening the, um, our natural killer cells, those cells that kill viruses. And also we know that there is a cardiovascular function. Can you stop the slide? Uh, um, uh, our cardiovascular function is um, much, uh, uh, and so our heart and circulation is working much better with laughter. Also, uh, it seems that people who have uh, may be living longer and we'll be talking about it at the end. And also there were studies showing that uh, laughter decreases the severity of depression and increases connectivity with people. And so by us laughing together, we'll be increasing our uh, joy and social connection and in times of quarantine that we cannot see each other in person the laughter that we will be doing together is going to connect us more so and uh, so we know that from a psychiatric standpoint we know that uh, uh, the laughter first of all psychiatrists and psychotherapists don't report on how frequently they use laughter they use laughter much more often than they actually admit it. And um, also the benefits of laughter are usually undervalued. What else is important that it improves therapeutic relationship. Actually, the, the therapists that laugh with their patients have better therapeutic relationship. So some people say, oh, it is um, some kind of uh, a, like, demeaning maybe or no the things that we are dealing with are too serious in order not to use some laughter and we also have evidence that uh, laughter decreases uh, depression anxiety and pain so <laughs> mark twain said that uh, studying humor and laughter is like dissecting a frog you may know a lot but you end up with a dead frog. So yes, it is pretty dry to, for me to go over this scientific part, but you see, I know people and people like to have a reason to do something. So I want to give you reasons for laughter. Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, that is, we are talking about, uh, we are talking about lifestyle modification. Most people know very well uh, 
uh, what they need to modify. They know very well that uh, physical activity is healthy. They know very well that eating veggies and fruit are, is healthy and reducing bread meat and processed meat and processed foods in general is healthy, but they don't do it. So, so even if they do it for a period of time, they don't stick with it. So, so yeah, so we, because uh, we are stuck with our own habits. So, this, so we will be trying to go th through this process in order for you to be able to engage in the totally new, uh, uh, totally new uh, process. So, uh, so yes, and uh, can you show the next slide, please? So I'm like this guy, uh, this doctor, that I, I believe that uh, laughter is the best medicine. Uh, and so, uh, but the thing is, can you imagine that there are studies showing that we cannot really make people laugh? So, uh, so the, uh, uh, we cannot, uh, so, so what the, the physician I am and Maxim Oldsby, our mentors and Michael, it is not about us training or, or treating people. We are teaching our patients and our participants uh, to learn how to be their own counselors. So self-counseling. And you see, so that trying to tickle all my patients would not work for me because what I want people to teach themselves laughter and guys can you t tickle yourselves can you no nope. no we cannot tickle ourselves right uh, and can and there are even studies showing that and it is <laughs> we don't need studies but but there are studies showing that we cannot tickle ourselves so uh, uh, can you move to the next slide please so some of the ideas that we are presenting here are very similar to uh, uh, to uh, the uh, uh, laughter yoga, um, and I know Michael is also a trained yoga teacher, so uh, a master yoga teacher, and so you see with uh, with the origin uh, the origin of laughter yoga is from Doctor. Uh, Kataria and his wife Maduri. Dr. Kataria noticed that laughter is healthy and he wanted to teach his patients uh, laughter. But uh, and his wife Maduri was a yoga teacher. So, so what they were I I encouraging was to, to really do a belly laughter, right? Really uh, deep belly laughter. And, uh, and that this laughter is extended and we will be interrupting our laughter with moments that we will take a breath. I will say one, two, three, and ask you to raise your hands and say, yay, to take a deep breath. So, uh, so but the, uh, there are nuanced differences um, uh, between those things, um, between yoga and what we are doing, unconditioned laughter. The basic issue is that they say, uh, in the yoga laughter that we can pretend and our body doesn't know if we pretend, while we believe that this unconditioned laughter without humor is our original laughter, the, the laughter that exactly the four months old babies have naturally. Um, so, Marius, if I could jump in here real yes, quick. please. Just add one piece. Um, so there's a reason we practice yoga or you say so you have a yoga practice. It's not about practicing yoga itself. The idea is that yoga helps us practice for life. So if you're doing a strenuous yoga class, putting your body into different shapes and, and positions, yet breathing into it and relaxing, that's a way to practice for life. When you find yourself in an uncomfortable place, you can breathe and you can relax. So with laughter yoga, same thing by practicing laughter, it's practicing for laughing in life and getting all of these benefits that Mariusz is talking about. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you very much, Michael. That is, uh, uh, I, I know that I can count on you to, uh, to tell us. Um, so, uh, so as we said, and the next slide, please. Mm. So we know that, that our laughter, 
uh, influences our immune system on multiple levels. First, uh, through autonomic nervous system that has endings in the bone marrow spleen, bone marrow where the uh, immune cells are produced, spleen, lymph nodes, and thymus where the uh, uh, immune st uh, cells mature, and also uh, uh, in the periphery where the, the immune cells function. But we also know that the, the limbic hypothalamic system, this is the, the limbic hypothalamic system is the area of our emotions, the green on this slide. And then, and that, that is the center that controls our autonomic nervous system, which is sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic is our uh, fight and flight response, uh, adrenaline, cortisol, and all those stress hormones. And then, um, and parasympathetic is relaxation, but also laughter. Um, and then we have hormonal system that is also uh, controlled uh, by, by limbic hypothalamic system and, um, and the axis with the uh, adrenal cortex. But also we usually think about brain that is multiple electric connections, where in fact the brain is uh, a most complex gland in our body. So, and here you have see neuropeptides. Actually, it releases 80 or more uh, different substances, our brain. And, and some of those are called neuropeptides. And a, so any of you heard of endorphins? Yes. Yeah. Endorphins. They were they were discovered in the early seventies by Candice Pert, and I met Candice Pert in uh, in Garmisch Partenkirchen, in Germany through Carl Simonton, and and uh, and those endorphins. And so actually, we're at the bar and we were drinking cocktails. And she was explaining me how the endorphins are working. And she said that with each emotion, our body releases a specific cocktail of uh, neuropeptides, endorphins um, and kephalins and other substances. And, and this cocktail has a specific <coughs> effect on our body um, uh, that is specifically related to that cocktail. And yes, next slide, please. Oh, um, and actually, our, the state of our immune system is also uh, feed, fed back to our brain, so our brain knows what is the state of our system. But the beauty of this is that this, particularly our neuropeptides, and oh, go back, please. Yes, this one. You see here, we, are, we see things moving. That is a telomere uh, of the chromosome. Chromosome, this is where our genes are uh, um, uh, all wind up over the chromosomes and and you see telomeres are actually those things that shorten the older we get and when we laugh these telomeres are being repaired much more efficiently so actually laughter can affect us also on a gene level not just the whole physiology all body because when we laugh you know are we we, we are working out our muscles or my mother usually says that oh you, when you laugh, you use your diaphragm to massage your liver and, and other organs, and that is really healthy for you. Um, and yes, your, your lungs are working and your cardiovascular system is working, but it, it affects you on a gene level. So it is really, really deep on the molecular level, on the level of the molecules. Next slide, please. So, uh, and yes, you may say, whoa, whoa what a strange slide, but I, I like this slide very much because of what? This slide shows that uh, if you look on the left upper corner, you have cortisol. Uh, this is actually a stress hormone. So, and when we laugh, the stress hormones are, um, are dropping. Also, you say other factors in our body that, that, that for example, decrease, uh, um, decrease the risk for stroke. Uh, and then in the right upper corner, you see interleukin-6. 
Interleukin-6 is responsible for our inflammatory response, response, inflammation. And many of you heard of inflammation having really significant role in heart disease, in cancer, and other problems, and Alzheimer's disease, so uh, in dementia. So, so yes, so with laughter, we decrease inflammation. But also, how many of you heard of uh, antioxidants? Okay, so I see that you heard of uh, all the antioxidants. So m many of you heard of antioxidants, but I think fewer of you like kale, right? <laughs> so you want to. So the point is that uh, yes, not everybody likes kale or spinach and all those green uh, stuff that has a lot of antioxidants. But if you look at the, the bottom row of those plots you see total oxidative status. So that means that when we laugh, we have increased antioxidants in our body. So laughter is antioxidant without needing to eat kale, right? I'm, I've, I promote kale, no, don't, don't take me wrong. And I don't get any, um, uh, I don't, there's no conflict of interest. The kale growers don't uh, give me any money, so uh, here. So if you could go to the next slide, please. And, and that is the best slide. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, people are texting me, oh, I don't like kale either. <laughs> so, but I like endorphins and antioxidants. So, so let me tell you a little bit about this slide. Uh, this slide lists 27 different genes that are related to the activity of natural killer cells. Those cells that eliminate cancer and those cells that eliminate uh, uh, virus-infected cells. So, so actually, it is interesting that the same mechanism for cancer and for, uh, you know what, um, Andrew, can, can we show those little uh, videos that I, uh, I sent you a link uh, for the videos on my website? Uh, just, just give me a sec. All right, so I will, I will explain this uh, to everyone. So you see, when we, so the, there are multiple studies on laughter and, and the, the researchers are always surprised how wonderful is laughter. So uh, they are surprised. Uh, and in this particular study, what they did is they got people to laugh and they measured the activity of genes that stimulate natural killer cells. Right? And it turns out that 34 different genes were activated with laughter. And Are you sure you wanted the video with the, with the NK cells? Uh, I, 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 if, you could, uh, uh, if you could just show the, the site and then uh, if, when you'll be uh, sharing the screen. And yes, and if you could, all right. And so this is an animation actually of, uh, and this is a natural killer cell. And the red things are red blood cells. And these natural killer cells, 10 to 15% of all white blood cells are uh, in, uh, uh, of our white blood cells are natural killer cells. And here we have a virus infecting another cell. And you see what is similar about the virus and cancer is that when the cell is infected with the virus, um, uh, this cell produces new proteins on this on the surface of the uh, cell. And you will see these yellow things popping up here. And because those cells have those new things, when you see on the left is uh, natural killer cells, the natural killer cell, and it says, oh, wow, you have some strange things, like not my things on the surface. And it kills this cell, right? The natural killer cell naturally kills virally infected or cancer cells. And why this cell, is disintegrated. Actually, it inf in cr causes the cell to disintegrate through the process of self uh, program self self destruction, which is called apoptosis. And then the natural killer cell floats further and goes, "Oh, you don't look like my normal cells. You must be a possibly cancer cell." So it kills another one. And what is happening when natural killer cells are active? They release. Um, uh, through the process of chemotaxis, um, 
the, they release those um, uh, cytokines that attract other uh, natural killer cells into this spot, you see? And actually natural killer cells used to be called uh, promiscuous cells because they would kill everything that is not uh, on uh, natural healthy cells. And I will ask you to jump to, oh, um, to just, uh, maybe move this uh, video further down. Uh, further, 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 further. Right here, a little bit back, a little bit back, a little bit back. Oh, here you have a tumor, cancerous tumor. And you can see how um, natural killer cells call each other and, and penetrate this tumor and kill this tumor. So, so that is how natural killer cells work. That is absolutely amazing. And, and removing tumor, cancerous tumor, but it also removes the, the virus infected cells. And, and now I will ask you to maybe show us the, the another slide. Uh, it, oh, you guys can go to our website. I'm going to post it in the chat right now, uh, the name of this website uh, in the future. If you want to see more of those videos, it is our beat hyphen the hyphen odds dot org slash videos. It went to, uh, it is going to go to all participants and attendees. Here we go. Uh, so in the future, you can just go there and, and uh, check this out. So now you understand why when we are laughing, uh, and we have excellent video of, uh, of uh, actually not an animation, but a real video of um, cytotoxic T cells with wonderful Cambridge, uh, no, actually Oxford uh, uh, um, uh, accent. So, so now you understand why those this humor response scale. And I, when I was showing you the slide with all the, if you could go back one slide with all the list of genes. So I said that when people are laughing, 34 of the genes are that are related to the activity of natural killer cells are stimulated. But an hour and a half and four hours later, still 27 of these genes were stimulated. And these are the names of all those genes. So. So that is actually incredible, right? The problem is that the researchers didn't plan that so many cells were, would be, so many genes will be activated. But we know from other studies that good laughter has ben health benefits that extend for more than 24 hours. Uh, so next slide, please. Very good. So now you understand why it is so effective. And and we also know that, that uh, next please, um, that there are other values, not just health values, but also spirituality, right? There are a lot of good quotes. Uh, um, uh, so actually Hafiz um, uh, believed that laughter is waking up our soul, right? There's a Yiddish proverb that a Passover is appropriate. Uh, what soap is to the body, laughter is to the soul. And, uh, and also, uh, in, uh, we have Ramadan coming up in a few weeks. Um, so blessed is he who makes his companions laugh. So, um, and in the Bible, we also have a lot of uh, nice quotes about laughter. We encourage you to um, look at them. So. But also we were talking about relationships. Next slide. Um, that laughter is the shortest distance between two people. And we, we know that when we laugh, we connect with each other and we will do that in a, a shortly. All right. Uh, and also uh, I know that the owner of my gym is on the line too, so thank you. Laughter is an aerobic exercise. Next slide, please. We can burn calories when we laugh. So we exercise our muscles and we burn calories. And, um, and we have, uh, and also the next one is we are talking about all the time that it increases our immunity. We have more details of the uh, slides, but I wanted to conclude with the one slide that talks about um, about 
the longevity in laughter. And it is a little bit uh, uh, tongue in cheek, but it is actual published uh, published the scientific paper in psychological science that was published in uh, 2010. And what they did, the researchers um, assumed that people who laugh, they usually will be very often will be smiling on pictures. And this is only possible in the United States because of baseball is so popular and has been for a long time. So they look at photographs of baseball players uh, and they they assume that those baseball players who never smile on any of the photographs uh, that most likely didn't laugh that much in their lives either and then they looked at those uh, baseball players so that is the solid line those who never smiled on any picture and then there's dotted line of those who smiled just just not fully committed, uh, like sometimes you can see Michael not fully committed to laughter. Uh, so, so just, 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 just mouth smiling without the eyes. But so that was that is the dotted line. And then they looked at the the smile that is full face smile, you know, with your eyes, with your uh, with your full face, and it and it is they call it Duchenne smile, and that is the third. Uh, curve, and you can see that by the age of 45, these curves are starting to separate. That means that those uh, who were not smiling and smiling just just uh, with their mouths um, were dying earlier than those who were very prone and smiled on every picture that was ever taken. Uh, so. So yeah, so that is great. And there we see that there is like 20 years difference between the ages of 65 and 85 um, between those two groups. Now, I have bad news for you. Everybody died, right? So it is not like it's going, laughter is going to give you eternal life, no. But at least uh, until you die, you can laugh at it. So, and maybe have better quality of life, better health and maybe longevity. And the process of that, I, I was showing you on those slides with the genes, that telomeres are, uh, are being uh, uh, renewed much faster. So what I will do with you right now, I will ask uh, um, that we will be doing uh, a very important uh, process with you. So, uh, since our polls do not really work, I would ask you to put in the uh, in the chat room if you could put to to, to share with everybody uh, answers to these questions. Um, so, do you think that that so just put A B C D E F or G. So if you strongly agree, agree, C, and D, if you don't know, you would like to have more evidence, you somewhat disagree. So if you could just throw those things uh, at us. Uh. All A's. All A's so far, wonderful. If you're posting answers you can select to post to all panelists and attendees so everybody sees but okay. right now we we see for those of you who don't see we we see mainly a's do you have anything of uh, d e f and g no not okay. even one all right so the reason that we are doing this poll is because we want before we engage we want to have intellectual insight into it that, that we really know what we need to do it is like driving in England on the left-hand side of the road, um, or for the British driving on, on continental Europe, uh, first need to, oh, wow, they are driving on the other side of the road, my steering wheel is on the right side of the car, and I need to shift gears with my left hand uh, in, when I am uh, going to London, for example. Excuse me. Yes. I tried to put A in the chat and it's uh -huh. saying this person is not in the meeting, but I am in the meeting and I was able to put in the chat before. So. 
Oh, you, you need to select that you're putting answer to everyone. All panelists. All, all uh, panelists and attendees. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, so, uh, wow, a lot of ways, yeah, practically. Uh, so, uh, wonderful. So yeah, so we, we first need to know where we are. We need to, to see the value in what we are doing. And then, so let's ask you another question. Would you like to learn the practical skills of laughing when there is nothing funny? And by practicing it, have a personal evidence in your body, personal experience that it works. Would you like that? We see Ace coming, one C. Um, so I so I see, yes. <laughs> we have two C so far, no Bs. Uh -huh. Okay, because we don't want to practice something that we don't fully understand, right? And so we don't see the value in it. And during practice, we will learn how to do it. Thank you very much. Uh, Colleen, are you able to do it? So you can put a, put your thumb up to say an A, two fingers to B, and three fingers a C. All right, if you cannot. Uh, so I'm putting one, okay, all right. Um, okay, so, uh, so I, I'm glad that I can see your faces because that, that is what we, what we want in this exercise is to, we have 54 participants right now. And, and those of you who can put the, our cameras up, it will be great because uh, uh, yes, we are recording it. So if you don't want your face in that, also don't put, do it. But uh, if you want to, uh, that would be great because we will be practicing now practically, practicing practically. So you can use the raise your hand feature if you're an attendee and if you still want to join us as a video participant. So put your hands up and I'll add you with a video. Okay, we have people. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, so, uh, so I will ask you to try to laugh and uh, uh, the way you will be trying to laugh is by combining a letter H with a vowel, like for example, ha ha ha. Can you do that? Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh, come on, Michael. So you are not laughing. You are not helping. <laughs> Let me ask you in your in your in your uh, new, uh, third poll uh, uh, in the uh, in the chat room. Can you answer these questions? Um, did you try to practice? Again, one is yes, two is no, and three a little. Yeah. No, because I can't. Okay. Wonderful. So uh, so yes, yeah, so that is great that actually, um, can you go back to the whole panel uh, so we can see everyone? Uh, so that, that is a great, but, but uh, even though, uh, Michael, you didn't laugh, you didn't laugh whatsoever. 
<laughs> oh, they are, you know, what, what is the polite way of saying half-assing it? I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> oh, Michael, are, you are really not trying very hard, huh? No. <laughs> so, so for you, so let, let me ask everyone the third, third question. Uh, if, oh, I'm sorry, fourth question. Um, if you tried or just imagined to try, how did it feel? Uh, just a few moments ago. And th th we have answers from A to H. Uh, so you felt great, energizing, somewhat uncomfortable at first, and maybe you, some of you felt weird, awkward, unnatural, wrong, felt nothing. You can put all the le letters that you actually felt. So all, all that apply, right? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and anybody can still keep answering so that we, we, we love these answers. And we see that some people felt actually D, some people felt C and D. Uh, there are many Ds, uh, wonderful. Uh, C's, but I also am happy to see all the A's and B's. Um, so, so what what's going on, Michael? Can you explain us to us? Because sure. Well, for those of you who answered A and B, and even some of the C's, good for you. Um, it already is a becoming part of your habit to want to laugh and have that be a good feeling. But for those of us like me that was down feel, saying it felt wrong, it felt weird, that's why I wasn't laughing, it didn't feel normal to me. Um, that's a process that we call cognitive emotive dissonance. And there's a lot of that going on right now. I'll give a quick explanation now, but talk about it more as we go on. So, you know, as we learn, for those of you who've been on these last few um, webinars, you've learned the ABCD model. A is something that happens, B is a belief we have about it, C is what feelings we have, D is what we do as a result. Well, in the learning process, and, and this gets back to Mariusz's example of uh, driving in England, through pairing A and B, so pairing a meaning with a certain stimulus over and over again, it kind of becomes something where we don't even have to think about it. So if you're driving in England, you automatically are going to go get in on the right-hand side door. Um, if you're right, driving in the U.S. or in uh, Europe, it's uh, getting into the uh, left side door. I guess it depends on what way you're facing the car. Um, so th this becomes an attitude that we have. So A's and B's get paired together. And the example I wanted to give today for this is around um, just what's going on in the world right now. There's so many things that we've had paired in the past. The one I wanted to think about, especially today being a holiday, is, is shaking hands or hugging people. Um, that, is a, that is a stimulus and a belief that we've often paired so strongly. If it's, if it's shaking hands, you walk into a business meeting, first thing you do, put your hand out, how do you do? Uh, walk into an Easter dinner, what do you do? First thing you go and hug everyone and oh, great to see you, so happy to see you. That's a attitude. We don't even have to think about that. And when you have that attitude, then the feelings you have, the behaviors in, you engage in, they flow out of that. Well, that feels right to us. Well, so here we are in this situation. Um, I'm, because of where I work, it's considered an essential service. So I'm still going in to work and meeting people there. Um, every single time I walk into a place, my intent, my first impulse is to put that hand out there. How do you do? And then catch myself, pulling it back. Everybody, it's almost out of fear. People are jumping back now. 
so we, we're shaking up that whole attitude we have around walking into a meeting, shaking hands. Now the beliefs are being told you can't do that anymore. And, and you're going to pass the germ, no touching. Well, that feels wrong. It just doesn't feel right to me. And still, every time I go in, I catch myself doing this. But what will happen over time, and I already see it happening, is I'm doing less of this. I'm doing more of this or more of this or more of this but not so much of this so we're creating a new attitude walking into a meeting belief is i need to shake hands i need to feel strong and powerful and friendly and i need to make sure that i give a firm grip like my father taught me um that's how it used to be it's different now so we we're all having cognitive emotive dissonance things are feeling wrong to mm -hmm. us and so what will happen though as this goes on further and further when we do go back to work when we do go back to these family gatherings it's going to start to feel unnatural to hug you're going to go in for oh well no, that's okay i'm not going to do that and so i this is something i'm really curious about watching moving forward how are we going to change these interactions we have based on these beliefs so right now it feels wrong to shake someone's hand but that's okay because right now it is right not to shake someone's hand that is learning. The cognitive emotive dissonance is, is, is a signal to us that new learning and new behaviors are taking place. So. So thank you very much, Michael. That is very important. And yes, we have a habit. So, so if you, and you think of an attitude that is like a habit, a complex habit that involves how I habitually interpret the stimulus, like for example, someone walking into the room, uh, into a meeting, uh, or the family gathering or any type of a gathering that I usually hug people like you know beat the outs classes we usually hug and uh, and now you oh no no don't do it and it is good for each other to help each other in this process so when we'll be learning to laugh for you laughing without humor is actually actually something very strange right because we are used to laugh when we there is something funny happening and here I'm asking you to laugh without anything funny to happen. So, uh, so we will, uh, so like with other emotions and other processes, we will now look at the, what are, what is the, what are the processes? What is the emotional process? What is the cognitive process? When you talk about cognitive, what is the thoughts, uh, beliefs and attitudes that cause us to feel that certain way and this sense of weird awkward unnatural uh, or feeling wrong is very typical for this cognitive dissonance when i am acting that is in conflict with my habits that is what i'm feeling that it feels weird awkward unnatural or wrong why it actually is the right thing to do right now not to hug not to shake hands right so so i uh so we will, uh, so now uh, we'll ask you to, um, so now tell me uh, uh, about your process uh, in when I ask you to, because I asked you to laugh in the middle of it and you didn't even try to laugh. So what was going on? And what was going on in your, uh, can you explain that in our uh, format? Of, activating event the ABCDs. Michael? Oh, you're asking me. I thought you were <laughs> you're trying to get okay. yourself out so of it. Those of you who weren't laughing and were paying attention, um, I wasn't laughing. Um, Mariush asked me to do that. And so when we're talking about the ABCD model, um, what is the activating event here? So I'll tell you exactly what happened. I'll tell you why I wasn't laughing. So here I was planning to spend a relaxing Easter Sunday with my family when Mariusz drags me into this webinar, calls me last night, drags me into this. Event. He totally made me feel guilty about wanting a day off. You know, then he has the nerve to ask me to try and fake laugh on Zoom. Um, he knows I'm introverted, but he still purposely expected me to look like a fool in front of people from all over the world. And so now I feel absolutely humiliated and will never show myself one of these stupid webinars again. <laughs> that is a nice description. <laughs> oh, it's real. 
So this is then A. So, uh, and all right. So some of you might have had similar uh, beliefs, and I would encourage it, I encourage for you to to describe how was it for those of you who ex who felt C, D, and so and below. Uh, a what well, how was it for you what feelings did you have uh, so actually we have uh, we have some emotions already listed because sometimes it is hard to uncover our beliefs about something uh, if we don't look at the emotions so so here we will ask you to look we selected from the list of different uh, emotions and words that express them that was adapted from david burns uh, feeling good together book strongly recommended uh, book uh, uh, so we will we selected those that people may have ex uh, experienced in this process so please put in the chat the feelings that you might have had in a, other than yeah. and put it to all all panelists so look at those emotions. Some you don't may not have had very intense. So when you, I will encourage you to have a piece of paper so if you could write down um, the feelings. Uh, if you had any of those feelings that are now displayed on your screen, uh, just or the words that describe them, just put those uh, in those three rows and then put what was the intensity uh, of that feeling. If there, there is, because I'm glad that people fell out. I mean, even though we didn't put a full, uh, full force behind it, and and actually, I ask you to try to laugh, uh, which is also use of unhealthy semantics on purpose, because people when they are asked to try to do something, they don't usually put their full effort. So, so yeah, so we'll ask you to. Uh, at the end, we'll ask you to put full force into the exercise. Yeah, self-conscious, timid, yes, I see, 50%, shy, 50%, intense, some people felt, yeah? Excited and interested. So, and, and when we are talking about percentage of intensity, we mean that if you have ever felt embarrassed, how, and what was, in percentage-wise, how embarrassed you felt this time? with the most embarrassed time of your life. So, Self-conscious, good. But some people felt connected, great. All right. Uh, all right, so we, we, we will, I'm glad that some of you didn't feel embarrassed. We, we will, uh, so, uh, so we will have our, uh, can you turn off this slide and uh, turn on the, our panelists uh, who agreed to, the eight people who agreed to be in the group. Uh, Andrew, you are, you, have, you are in charge of everything. Uh, <laughs> I, I was not it. able to keep track. All right. So eight people. So I saw... Alexandra wanted to be in the group. Let's raise hands, whoever wanted to join the group and the exercise. No, Connelly, uh, Andrew, you will be in the group. Great. So we have three people. Anita, Mary. Okay. Connelly. All right. All right, so, so Andrew, do you have eight people? Because I, I'm somehow I, I'm not smart enough to see in this formula. Yeah, no. Okay, Diana. Okay, we have Diana, Connolly. Let's keep the hands up so so we can just notice everyone. Okay, we have Mary, Joe. I think we have it. Joe, Diana, Alexandra. Anita. So you see more people. All right. Brennan, Diana. Yeah. Brennan. Evie. Evie. All right. So we have eight people. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, we have eight people. Perfect. All right. So, um, wonderful. So, we will ask you to... to um... Do you all oh. have piece of paper and pen with you? All right. Perfect. Perfect. So we will start with the left uh, column. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, some people have second thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't worry, Anita. There's nothing. That, that, so we will, uh, if you could unmute everyone in this. Uh, <clears throat> all right. We will, if, if they, so make sure that you don't have anything else going in the background. Um, so, uh, we will ask you to uh, perfect uh, so so the thing that we will be doing now is uh, look at the, those three emotions that you guys had all right uh, those three groups of emotions okay all right and then we will ask you to uh, to um, let's see what was the intensity, and now we'll look at the what are the benefits of, and everybody can jump in, not just the people who are in the panel, but everybody can jump in and tell us what are the benefits of, for example, feeling embarrassed, self conscious, flustered, humiliated, or ashamed, or, or shy. What are the benefits? Of course, you, you already put the intensity if you experience them. Self-consciousness. Uh -huh. So self-consciousness, what's the benefit of it, Anita? Um, hmm. Okay, so I may help you maybe. That being self-conscious is, uh, is making me much more aware of my own behavior. Right. So uh, that is one of the benefits, right? That... Well, uh, I don't want to offend anyone with my behavior. I don't want to uh, act in a way that would be harmful to anyone or disrespectful, right? So, so these are the benefits, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. What well, are yeah. other benefits of being shy? Mm -hmm. Yes, Alexandra. I'm thinking about um, actually when I feel shy, then I can think about improving my um, skills, how I can act in front of other people and how I can perform myself, which tells me that I can practice more to be more confident around other people. Oh, perfect. Yeah, exactly. So being shy may be motivating for me to, yeah. okay, what I, what I, I, I for example, uh, yes, uh, a for for example, this is the first time I'm doing this workshop with Michael and Andrew. So so yes, if we have done more of those dry runs, but it is very it was very hard with our family obligations to do it, then we could be more comfortable doing that. So we had some apprehension in doing that. So yeah. So and 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 Michael has never done this laughter with me ever. So even though we taught him a lot of different workshops. Yes, then what other benefits? Well, it's also allowing myself to be more aware of my feelings and my presence in, uh -huh. in a place by being a little bit shy or embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I may my put more um, awareness of how I myself or what I'm actually feeling. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. Oh, that is very good. Um, uh, uh, taking care of myself, right? So that if I'm too shy to do something, it may be not for me to do, right? Right? So, so what if you're not very embarrassed? I mean, is that... Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So no. Is that yeah. a bad one? If you're not embarrassed, that's good too. No, no, no. we are only talking about <laughs> when it is a problem for someone, uh, no, no, don't worry. We, are, we don't want to create a problem when there is no problem. But where is this? <laughs> when there's a problem, because embarrassment and shyness and things keep people from actually doing the things that they would like to do, they hard desires. But you see, it, a lot of people may hate their shyness, they may hate their feeling of embarrassment, they hate their feeling uptight, and so on. 
and, and they want to get rid of it. But the first, in order to get rid of it, we don't want to. We want to actually understand these feelings first. So this process is called emotion integration that we do. So we do cognitive process too, but first we integrate our emotions with our experience. So the emotional integration is also unique to our approach and David Burns approach. Uh, the empathy in his approach is, is, is significant here. So, so be... I'm talking about David Burns here is the empathy. Oh, okay. Strongly recommend uh, feeling good together. Uh, and this is going to be also in the notes. Uh, so, uh, so mm -hmm. you know, can you show this slide? Because it's not just we want to see what are the benefits of these feelings. Uh, oh, people say gratitude, right? That is also, but we also want to look <laughs> what the values. So the first line, the first row of, uh, from embarrassment, shy, foolish, self-conscious, ashamed, what values does this feeling reflect and so it, it is to all pa everyone and not just people eight people in the group but everyone can say what are the good things that come what that say about us what are the beautiful and awesome things that these feelings say about us that we have good self-esteem no i'm talking about embarrassment well i think it it indicates that we have self-esteem and that's why we're embarrassed or feel that um, emotion. Although okay. it isn't necessarily something you should feel um, you about, should that's feel my personal feel. So very important. Yeah. And that is what we want to emphasize that. Yes, thank you very much, Anita, you're right. Um, so yeah, that is very important that we always feel what we may not want to feel, but we always feel what we should feel. So we are not right. pushing our emotions away. We are learning from our emotions. So. So thank you, Annie. That is great. Um, what other values um, that are beautiful and awesome? It's, For example, a, that I a, am respectful to others, right? Um, we um, have our boundaries, boundaries as well. Like oh, my boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, internal boundaries. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. what, what other? It shows that we're humble and not mm -hmm. pompous about our own behavior. Oh, that is great that we are humble, not pompous, right? That is nice. That we uh, that we don't want to break social norms. That we are honoring social norms, yes, and existing mm -hmm. traditions and conventions, yes. Oh, Carl Simonton was teaching in very different countries, uh, from America through Europe and Asia, and. And, uh, and the same thing, we did also workshops in South Africa. So, so yeah, respecting local culture and, and, and learning those things um, and being, that is also the value. What are the values are of feeling embarrassed? Yes, yeah, being humble. That also reflects that I know that I don't know everything, right? And I don't always know that every, I may not always uh, be right with everything. So, so for those of you who felt embarrassed, if you could put at the end, what would be your goal? Because since the embarrassment has benefit and reflects our values, what would be your goal? Maybe if you felt embarrassed, let's say 60 or 70 percent, what would be, no, no, go back. We, we, we just put the goal um, here. All right. Perfect. At the end. Goal. Thank you very much, Andrew. Because we don't want to get rid of our embarrassment too much, you know, if, if, if it has benefits and values, right? And don't worry, if we, if we lower your embarrassment too much, we know how to fix it and we know how to make you embarrassed again. So, <laughs> how to bring the sense of embarrassment high. <laughs> we know. All right. Okay, so let's uh, so let's stay with this slide and and let's do the same process for anxiety. How many of you felt apprehensive, uptight, nervous, anxious, and wh what intensity you had? So, if those of you who experienced those emotions, uh, what were the benefits of it? Michael, help us here. <laughs> yeah. 
I think Joe said something there. I don't know if we heard it. Uh, no, I didn't have any any anxiety. I wasn't anxious about about about. So I I don't really have much to say other than you know the only thing I could possibly be protecting is my ego. That mm -hmm. I get laughed out laughing. Uh huh. It doesn't make sense to me. So uh, I, I, uh, I usually don't let my my ego get in the way of experimenting on something I, that I don't have experience with. Just go along with it. Let the inner child go ahead. And so you are great in, in noticing it because actually you cannot laugh fully and you cannot do the exercise that's going to come after that fully if you don't suspend your ego and you don't suspend your judgments yes very good thank you very much all right so 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 anxiety what is the benefit of anxiety so that i'm much more aware of the things that are around me right um it protects mm -hmm. us from danger uh, pardon protect us from potential danger yeah, protect, yes, uh, protects us from danger. And what is the danger of laughing in front of other people? That, oh, the judgment, right? So we, <laughs> we don't want to be judged, right? So, but also it may, uh, so, what, so what other values um, uh, are of feeling anxious, apprehensive, uptight, or nervous? That's the fight or flight, isn't it? Yes, it very much, it, it is a flight and fight uh, but it mm -hmm. is a fight right right so what so lack of fight then <laughs> flight no no anxious yes. it motivates us to flee uh, or avoid so it is protection as michael already said okay. but what my values yeah. are reflected in anxiety that i'm careful right right mm -hmm. yes that i do care what people think about me Right. Right. I may not care, but uh, but anxious people <laughs> do care. I think um, for me, if I get anxious or nervous uh -huh. about something, then I become more driven, uh -huh. and I want to be better, and I want to learn, and mm -hmm. and it makes me, which I guess gets into you know the unmotivated. But I get mm -hmm. it. I become more motivated. Mm -hmm because of that okay so so that is very good point that that anxiety mo motivates us to to avoid that in the future so if i didn't do something correctly right before uh mm -hmm. if i felt oh i was not up to par up to my speed then i want to improve on that in the future very, very good um it, all right well, it would also give us reason to do the deep breathing that we always learn about. Yeah. So yeah. So I much. So anxiety also makes me more aware. So I yeah of things that are going on. Um. So, so yeah. So these are the values of anxiety, right? Makes us aware to be in the present. That makes us aware to be in the present, but also thank you. It also. Uh, uh, that that we value uh, uh, like uh, uh, we value safety you yeah? know so so yeah i think and an important one on that is is being prepared it'll make me prepared if i can worry about every bad thing that would happen then i can prepare for it somehow even though we really can't do that that is a value of being ready for whatever's coming yeah. Oops. Mm -hmm. Very good, and we are learning. Sorry, so that is very important. That anxiety also motivates us, as some people say, learning. So I value learning. I value improvement. Oh, being cautious. Yeah, being cautious. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, and so, it's in, for those of you who had significant anxiety doing this exercise, put your goal. What would be your goal? Uh, to what degree would you like to decrease it? So, so if you, for example, for. 80% anxious, some people say, well, maybe 80 is an exaggeration. And in this situation, maybe we can put on 20 or 10. Marius? Yes. I did not feel any anxiety during the ha 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 part, but now oh. as I'm on the panel, 
I'm finding myself having a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. Ditto for me. Uh, talking to myself. So I feel like the value to me would be, you know, again, as he said, preparing myself for this type of thing. As again, there is no preparedness for this. I'm on the spot now. And so now I'm like thinking in my mind, how do I, how do I make myself better for this? And I don't want to, I don't want to offend anybody, nor do I want to embarrass myself to a higher level. So that's, uh-huh. these are the emotions that I'm getting from this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so this is great because we will be doing, a, a, so Michael is going to do a camera test of perceptions. If, if, and we may come back to you if there was anything embarrassing in, in what you said. So, and, and for those of you, thank you very much, Bren. And Brennan is actually the owner of the gym that I'm going to, so, so I'm always... Uh, uh, so yeah, we are talking lifestyle a lot. So, uh, and he's an excellent teacher. So, and then uh, talking about the gym, how many of you felt unmotivated, uninterested, bored, disengaged during this exercise? Can I, can I just say something on that? Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, I've done this kind of activity before, but when I started, that was actually like 10, 12 years ago. So first time when I joined the group, I was actually observing people because I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? And because we were all together in like a small room with our windows, with our daylight, we didn't know each other. I was like, I'm not gonna do it. But because I kind of like practiced that for, few years now I feel very I just do it it's a task for me like every other thing I just do it but when I when I just remind myself like uh, 12 years ago I was like no leave me alone (laughs) so I think practice um, is is very important that we actually see um, the benefits of it and we can improve ourselves and like you said about the, the the 34 genes that will help us and improve our um, immune system as well. So I think it's, it's, it's very good and I love it. That's why I didn't have any problem with that this time. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so, so you see, when we are doing this exercise right now, there are different thoughts coming through your mind, yeah. right? Um, so I will ask you, Alexandra, and everybody else who is, uh, uh, who is in, in the group, actually, uh, to write down the thoughts that you had when you are putting yourself at the in those feelings and feeling embarrassed and feeling anxious and unmotivated the the thoughts that were driving these emotions so so we will go there and and so uh, for those of you who felt unmotivated so you alexander already mentioned that 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 unmotivated is not even that unmotivated but you felt actually uh protective protective and, I think, and um, dismissive actually yeah. you're pushing this thing away yeah. you know yeah it, oh, but it's so stupid i would not do it right so yeah what... i i actually felt it was so stupid and i wasn't ready because that was so sudden i was like i don't want to swear here but <laughs> 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 yeah so um yeah in California, we are quite relaxed about swearing, but I don't know. <laughs> so I don't want to embarrass myself with my swearing here. Uh, <laughs> and I want to be respectful uh, to everyone. All right. Um, uh, so, so when you were, so what, if someone experienced this being unmotivated um, significantly, what are the benefits of feeling unmotivated? Hmm. So I can give you one example. That, for example, you are the benefit of it is i'm not engaging in things that i they make no sense to me right i'm not wasting my time in doing things that uh, i don't see value in right or you can't make me do it (laughs) that is yeah i cannot make you do it yeah exactly or that I don't understand why I'm doing this in the first place. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so that is a benefit of not being motivated or disengaged. Right. Right. And feeling bored is the same. I, I, that, I, I want to do something more interested, interesting. And I see that people are dropping out of the conference call quickly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. When I was doing it, I felt insincere, like it was because because my mind knew it was fake. But mm -hmm. I but if you know there's benefit, you can fake it till you make it. Exactly. Like uh, the that, so that yeah. yeah, actually there was a great book, uh, "Feel the Fear, Do It Anyway." It is 1970s. This is actually the basis of dealing with any type of anxiety. So great. Thank you, Sam. I'm going to put you over here. Pardon? Our, um, I think it is just the noise. All right. So, so how about the values that reflect? Uh, that I value knowing what I'm getting myself into, right? I value the uh, my time. Also, I'm not going to be doing something. Uh, I value my effort, right? All right. Okay. So. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask Michael to, and, and Andrew, if you could jump to camera check of perceptions. Uh, first, the same statement that the Michael did, uh, uh, how did he describe the situation uh, in activating event, and then we will jump to camera test of perception. All right? Okay. So first, if you felt I'm motivated, what, how motivated you would like to be as your goal, right? So yeah, back, back to the A, the activating event slide. So when I gave that example, which we'll see here in a second, um, of why I didn't laugh. So let me say one thing though, I didn't laugh. While I was not laughing, there you go. Back. Next, Next one. one. There we go, oh, here. just leave that one up. So what I wanted to say though is, I was purposely not laughing so that we could set it up for the, the next thing to come. Um, what I noticed though, as you guys were doing the fake laughing, was that it started to turn into real laughter. I could, I could hear it in some of your voices that it became real. And actually, I then started to feel like laughing. I had to bite my tongue so I wouldn't laugh, otherwise it would have spoiled the next piece. So, so there is, I think, power in numbers and kind of getting to what, to what Brennan said. Um, you know, if there's just a few of our faces on screen and you're having to do something embarrassing, that's one thing. But if there's 30 or 40 or 50 people laughing, it's much easier to do, but it, it becomes very infectious. So anyway, I want to go back to this is, um, so the, the emotions that I kind of identified for this exercise for me was that, you know, having to laugh like that, I would feel embarrassed. I would feel foolish. I would feel nervous. Um, and actually, there is more than a little bit of, of truth in some of this. I don't like putting myself out there. I don't like doing things that I think are going to be embarrassing. So back to that last slide. Okay, thank you. Um, so there's, there's one technique that we use um, that's called the camera test of perception. And if you read through this example I gave here, thinking about the emotions of embarrassment and nervousness and foolishness, you can see because of the idea that emotions follow logically from the beliefs we have. If you read this as the description of my mental state, you can clearly see where I come to those emotions. But often when we describe an event, we put a lot of judgment into that. And so there's a, there's a tool we use called the camera test of, of perception. So what we do is ask someone to re reword what they said, reframe what they said, use the okay. uh, Yeah, I don't know if we could mute that into Malsa and Mary a little. So the idea being that, let me go back and retell the story the camera test is the idea that what if a video camera, and I know that's old technology right now, but what if there was a video camera filming actually what was happening? Well, what does a video camera pick up? A video camera picks up images of what's happening. And if it's recording sounds, it's in, it uh, is picking up the exact words that are being said. And it may be picking up a little bit of tone as well, but that's all a video camera says. So, if, and I'll go through this quickly, but if we go through this and, and look at the description I made. So I was planning to spend, spend a relaxing Easter Sunday with my family. Okay, first of all, would a camera pick that up? Does the camera have any idea what my plans were for the day, that it was Easter, that my family's around? Well, no, it doesn't. 
um, when Marius dragged me into this webinar. Okay, would a camera have captured Marius dragging me? Well, no, because he's in California and I'm in New Mexico. So Marius didn't drag me into anything. He totally made me feel guilty about wanting a day off. Again, camera doesn't know I wanted a day off. Camera, no, well, actually, Marius can't make me feel guilty. We've, we've already established that no one can make you feel anything. So then he has a nerve to ask me to try to fake laugh on Zoom. Again, a camera doesn't know what nerve, what's going on with Marius. So you see how this process goes. If we're just looking at what happened if a camera was filming it, really what happened if a camera was filming it was I was sitting in front of my computer, Marius asked everyone to laugh, everyone laughed, I didn't. Period. That's all it's picking up. It's not picking up what any of the attention. And so what we can find often is if we just do that task, the camera test, then we can and then reevaluate the emotions we identified. So based on what I had said there initially, embarrassment, I could say I was a nine or a 10 out of 10 on embarrassment. But when I just break it down to Mari, I, I was on a video chat. Mari, you asked us to laugh. I didn't. Well, then where does my embarrassment go? It's probably not a nine or a 10 anymore. It's gone down. So the idea is very important that when we describe things to other people or describe them to ourselves, we put in all of this unhealthy language, all of this extreme language, all of this judgment, that if we can just learn to parse that away and just really break down to, oh, that's what really happened, we often find that a lot of the emotional distress we're feeling about the situation goes away very quickly. So Andrew, can you show just this screenshot of the uh, of the camera chat, the camera test of perception that if you in the uh, oh, oh, oh. I don't know. Okay, no worries. Uh, Everybody is going to get this uh, huge forum uh, to so that you can look at look it up later on. So. <clears throat> uh, so thank you very much. Uh, so as you could see, there were many beliefs and emotions like humiliation and so on in how Michael described the situation, right? So, so the, the, the point is that we move those things to proper sections. And I, if you allow me to, to show the whole forum uh, to people, uh, so they will see how the forum looks like and I will uh, I'm going to share the screen. Oh, you have the screen. Okay, you can do it. All right. Uh, so I'm not going to be. So, so, so here we did. We did camera check of perception of. So here, what Michael described it, it, it contained a lot of emotions and and also beliefs. So we would here we would write down exactly what camera would check which would be the camera would record which would be just Michael sitting in front of his computer and not laughing after I asked everyone to laugh and everybody else laughing on zoom but not Michael and then so these beliefs would move to left column under B disturbing beliefs driving the particular emotion right so so for, for example his statement he dragged me into it right would kill his motivation right so if he's so that was so he might be resentful as alexander was talking about that he might be resentful that i dragged him so it would be even more on purpose for him not to to laugh with us right uh, and if he and so we will now go through this part with our panelists and um, and you see we will be checking their beliefs can you scroll down uh we'll or let me screen share because i have and we'll and at the bottom you have five five um we we have this on side actually oh, oh no no i will i will show this oh. so here you can see uh i will so you, we will be doing this process now in the group. So what we will ask the, the presenter, the person who presents and who is the expert to say, what, uh, first of all, we'll ask everybody what type of beliefs they might have had. And we'll pick one and we'll go through the whole process with one belief. Uh, of course, I, if you do it on your own, we recommend that you do with more beliefs. 
And for each of these beliefs, we will be asking those five rules for healthy thinking. And so we'll ask if this uh, belief is based on obvious facts, does this belief protect my life and health? Does this belief best help me to achieve my short or long-term goal? Does this belief uh, help me to prevent or handle most unwanted conflicts with others? And does this belief help me to feel the way I want to feel without abusing any substances? And remembering that all rules are equally important. Uh, healthy beliefs, uh, obey uh, or answer yes to at least three uh, of these questions. And what is healthy for one person um, a, a, um, what, what is healthy for one person may not be healthy for another and what is healthy for you today may not be healthy for for next one and and also some rules may not apply and like rule number one does not apply to spiritual, religious, philosophical or existential beliefs. So, um, so, I will, so let's do this way that I will ask Michael, we can, I will stop sharing now. Uh, I'll ask Michael to be the expert in the group. So you are going to be uh, like you, you have a group and then and that one person presents uh, a problem list and then so, uh, Michael, we will work on which belief you would like to work on from all the beliefs that we notice in your uh, uh, section A and that were eliminated from section uh, by, by doing the camera check. But the feelings that would lead to, if, if beliefs that would lead to one of the feelings in C, which would be our either embarrassment or anxiety or unmotivated, which belief you would like to work on? Um. Well, yeah, since I didn't say anger for you dragging me into it, let's do the, um, uh, let's do the final belief. So, uh, Andrew, you could write down that last sentence. I was absolutely humiliated and will never show my face in one of these webinars again. All right. So, uh, who we have are the panelists. So, so we, if you could unmute the, the group members. Uh, so uh, group members, please unmute them yourselves. But you can write down this belief for yourself, okay? Because all, all group participants are going to be acting as if they had the same belief, okay? So, so the process in the group process in um, emotional integration, we did emotional integration and now we are doing belief work. Um, so the group process in here is that we, who are in the group are writing down exactly can you repeat it again for everyone to write down yes i'm typing it into the chat so i was absolutely humiliated and will never show my face in one of these webinars again Okay. Thank you very much, Michael. All right. So I will ask now um, other panelists. So, uh, Michael, how strongly do you believe it? Uh, or did you believe it? That's for the purpose of our exercise. Sure, 90%. 90%. Okay. Um, so so the, the, uh, the, the question to all panelists is, what is the benefit of this belief? Protection of ego? That what? Protection of ego. Protection of ego, but also that he's not going to be coming uh, into these webinars again. So I think we all will benefit. We will all benefit. <laughs> Sunday is free. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's going to spend more time with his family. Yeah. The setting a boundary, how about? The setting a boundary. A boundary. Mm -hmm. boundary. Uh, what other? 
that he would have time with his family, that, that he would have uh, setting Spend boundaries, more, time. more yeah. yeah, more assertive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, work, work is going to get much easier because all I'm doing these days, just like the rest of us, are our Zoom meetings. So yeah. I have to do it anymore. Uh -huh. Okay, so what are the other benefits of this belief? Um, being able to express himself. I, yeah, more, more expressing himself, very good. This would be redundant, but taking the inner feelings and bringing them out. Okay, so uh, yes, expressing, yes, exactly, bringing them out. Uh -huh. And threatening someone about not coming back. No, that would be actually a relief. And <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> no, 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 I'm really happy. So we are do, do, do using some humor here. All right. Yeah. So, of course. Uh, uh, protecting, I, protecting himself from protecting future himself. embarrassment. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is very good. I, this is Connelly. I don't yeah. really see a benefit to being absolutely humiliated or never showing his face here again. No, it's, no, it is not the, a benefit of uh, being humiliated, but a benefit of believing he was going to be humiliated. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't see a benefit for him for that. Well, if you recall, Mario said that when we go through the five questions here, what's true for me may not be true for you. So you may not mm -hmm. see that, but for me, I absolutely see that, and I am the expert on me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so what are the values uh, that reflect this belief, Michael? I have pride. Yeah, he has pride. Self-respect. Self-respect. I like he to value play. family. I like to play on Sundays, not work. Oh, come on, we are coming to back to you as, at the end because you are you are the expert. So don't, don't, don't. so what, what are other values that he values family? He values time. He values. Uh, being independent, he doesn't want to be told what to do, right? Yes. Right. And he, he doesn't want to be your, and he doesn't want to be your friend, is what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that is very smart. I'm uh, sorry. He's intelligent. He's intelligent. I had to throw that. I had to throw that in. Okay. okay. Sorry. Self-esteem. Very good. So, self-esteem. Self um, but self-esteem is a tricky thing. We will talk about self-esteem another time, but. But uh, okay, and Michael. So we are coming back to you right now. What would be your value? So you see, the process here is the expert, the presenting person goes last. Um, okay, what, what anything? What what I these values that, that we mentioned drive with you? I think those people know me very well already, and so I would agree with all of them. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, so uh, so now let's go to the bottom and look at the five rules for healthy thinking ah. so so let's go can you show so i'm sorry i'm just reminding those rules but let's go back to the belief so people can look at the original belief the b1 thank you and uh, i was absolutely humiliated and i will never show my face of one of those webinars again is it so this is the question to all the group is it based in facts uh -oh. no no, no. no. Does this thought protect my life and health? No. Or yes. I, mean, it I think protect. so. Or it, how, how In does? his own way, it protects yeah, if, his, if his wife was murderous for not attending the <laughs> Easter breakfast <laughs> or Easter lunch, then possibly. Does this thought just help me? So if I had this, so, so let's make sure that we are applying it to ourselves. So if I had this belief, so each, each of you on, on the group, if you could say, if I had this belief, would this belief best help me to achieve my short and long-term goals? The only way it would is, is that he wouldn't attend any more webinars. <laughs> no, I, I, and I know, I, uh, but also for you, you know, if you were in his shoes, well, you could see that, that you no. might be motivated to help as many people as possible. You're a psychologist, <laughs> renowned yeah. psychologist. You, want, you have a lot of knowledge. You have... Uh, you are skilled and very unique approach, uh, which is Maltzby's approach. So how, how uh, 
so yeah, so your short term goal is to to help people deal with this um, pandemic, but the, your long term goal is to convey the knowledge to as many people as possible, right? So uh, it wouldn't help me. Yeah, it, it, it would. It would it help you to to prevent or handle most unwanted conflicts with others. This may not apply, or it may apply. And actually, it may cause him to be in conflict with me, but yes. less conflict with his wife. So that is a choice, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you have this belief, and then the first time you put me there, Marnie. <laughs> no, but it, before it was primarily skiing. <laughs> uh, and number five, would it help you to feel the way you want to feel? Yeah. If you had this belief. No, not yeah. at all. All right, so really coming back to Michael, so does this believe I was absolutely humiliated and will never show myself in one of these webinars again? Is, would it obey any of the five rules? Would, it, you, would you answer yes or any of them? Uh, no, it's not based on obvious fact because tomorrow I have to meet with all my staff over a webinar. Um, does it protect my life and health? Um, no, because I don't like to feel humiliated. It makes me feel bad or I make myself feel bad when I'm humiliated. Does it help me achieve my short and long-term goals? Maybe the short-term goal of, of uh, doing something else today, but the long-term goals, as he said, in, in terms of helping people through the pandemic with the skills that I have, it would not help me meet that. So does it help me prevent or handle unwanted conflict? No, because I made a commitment to work with you on this and I don't want to uh, have a conflict with you over it. And does it help me feel the way I want to feel? No. Um, no, it doesn't, because I don't want to feel humiliated, and I'll probably go get drunk after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, Alexa, you tried to say something? Yes, can I ask a question? Let's say I'm not experienced in those uh, five questions, and... Uh -huh. um, so I answered obviously no, and I'm very aware about the fact that it doesn't protect my life. And I answer no to all the questions. What do I do next? Because even though I, and I answer all those questions, I have no idea how can I change it? I'm, I'm aware now, no, five no's, but what next? Okay, exactly. Next is what is very specific to um, uh, Maltby's approach. We are using those five rules to formulate a healthy belief. You see in, in the column HB, uh, we will write a healthy belief that would follow at least uh, uh, three of the five rules. And actually here we have two choices, right? Uh, we can either profoundly accept it, right? Okay, I was absolutely humiliated um, and I will not show my face on these webinars again. And I, and I can profoundly accept, yes, I humiliated myself, but at least I freed, I freed myself from my ego attachment, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and the humiliation is excellent. And, and yes, if I don't do the, these webinars, I may be doing other webinars on my own terms, not Mariusz's terms. So that is one of the way of approaching it. But, but I would ask the whole group now to formulate a new belief that would be obeying at least three of the five rules. Uh, and so what would be helpful? So, and we'll come back to Michael at the end to see what he would formulate. Well, one of the things he did was he succumbed mm -hmm. to your request. Mm -hmm. All right. So somehow or another, a healthy belief came along, transforming his thought about not doing it, strongly no. being humiliated and maybe not so humiliated after all. All right. I'm sorry, I guys. I, I see that we are running out of time, so we really need quickly okay. a healthy form. Michael, I will come back to you because we have we, we still need to practice laughter, right? It would be nice. If we, if um, we... What about the fact that uh -huh. would a healthy belief be that no one that's listening to the webinar knows that I'm humiliated? Oh, that is very good. So objective reality based on facts camera would not notice that it, he was humiliated. He was just sitting, not laughing, look, looking at people laughing, right? So there was no humiliation there. So Michael, let's come back to you. Sorry, we are wrapping up. So what would be your healthier belief from what you heard? It was uncomfortable um, for a moment. 
Um, and I know I, I need to do webinars for work, so I'll find a way to get through this. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. All right, so what we are going to do now, please change to the panel of everyone. So now we, we would have followed, if there were more beliefs, we would follow the same process uh, to address all the beliefs. And we, uh, Whenever you are any type of a problem, we, we encourage you to start writing down for at least seven minutes, right? So what we will be doing now is actually, since now we know that it is unhealthy beliefs that keep us from practicing laughter and laughter is good for us, I will teach you some laughter. So I want you to laugh and you can do ha ha ha, ha ha ha, he he he, ha ha ha, ho ho ho. And we will do it for a minute right now. Please do so and do your signature laughter. And you can go through all different laughters at the same time. And this, just show your best. And turn on the mics. So what we are doing is playing with making sounds of laughter, right? And of course, we don't want any new pain, any new suffering, whatever. So if your ribs are stopped hurting, so just withdraw for a moment. Um, okay, so now I want to play with you with different uh, pitch of laughter. Like, what is it? He has high pitch, oh, oh, has low pitch, and ha 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 is medium pitch. So I will be showing with my hand. This is going to be he he. he. This is going to be ho ho ho, and this is going to be ha ha ha. Okay? Let's start. <laughs> 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 and, and now you imagine that you are home and there are other members still asleep or maybe uh, after lunch having a siesta or whatever and you want to laugh but you don't want to wake them up right or you are all in your own cubicle and you want to laugh but you don't want other people to see it so or hear it right so what do you do we have to we'll do voiceless, soundless laughter, and I will show you. <laughs> once you once you get it, please join me. <laughs> 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 One, two, three, yay! <laughs> All right, guys, um, uh, we uh, covered significant amount of, of, of our practice, uh, but what's the bottom line? What we want to in involve is that you keep doing it. So in order for you to do it, just now in your mind, I want you to do a brief uh, rational emotive imagery exercise. So that is because if we cannot imagine something, we won't do it. So imagine yourself now, pick a time uh, during the day among your usual routine. It may be shortly after you get up or, or whenever, uh, during lunch break, or that you will practice laughter for at least 10 minutes. Right? And so imagine yourself doing it. Just go there. It, so see yourself in your mind's eye doing that. Right? 
And of course, you may experience this cognitive dissonance. It may feel weird, awkward, unnatural. Or there may be beliefs coming up for you that are pre preventing you from engaging them. So just imagine that you would check them with five rules for healthy thinking. You are going, all you are going to get this long form uh, from me, Andrew, because I have the last version of it. And, and if you felt embarrassed or resistant or I won't do it, most likely these feelings are going to come back, right? And uh, because of what? Because it is your habit. So learn to, so you see the way you eliminated these beliefs and feelings was today during this exercise. It is the same thing that the same process that you will need to do in the future. So, so yeah. So for at least a week, run an experiment that you believe that la laughter is healthy, that laughter, there's nothing embarrassing about it. Of course, if our ancestors were going for a jog 10,000 years ago and nothing was chasing them and they were chasing nothing, they would be embarrassing. But here, we, people jog for health, right? The same thing here. We don't need to have humor or anything funny to laugh. It is healthy for us. So, and actually how we work with our laughter as a fractal from chaos theory standpoint may generalize to other aspects of our lives. So Michael, do you have anything Amazing. else to add? Uh, no, that was fun and I'm glad I uh, laughed. <laughs> okay, now they're doing greetings. Um, no, I just want to say I wish everybody a great rest of uh, your Easter yeah. day, whatever exactly. holiday you celebrate. Have a wonderful week and hope to see you. And thanks to all Thank of you, you for participation and really involvement. And we could hear and see you laughing. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank it you. Would be a nightmare yeah. if you all texted each yeah. other outside of me and not laugh, and I would be only <laughs> making fun of myself. And thanks to Prosoma and Andrew. Uh, anything else that you would like to add? Happy Easter to everyone and happy Pesach. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. God bless you. Thanks, everyone. everyone. I'll be laughing for a few hours now. Okay, I'll, I'll be laughing for a few hours now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do it. Do it. Don't okay. hesitate. Just a minute, now? minute and a half. Do a break and deep breathing. Okay. Dr. Okay. Now? Yes. This is Connelly. Um, uh, there's actually an uh, online laughter yoga class that's done every day at 820. Um, Jeffrey dot briar that i signed up for a couple days ago they usually meet in laguna on the sand mm -hmm. but it's they're doing it online so every morning at 8 20 in case so, anybody wants to know thank you very much colin <laughs> can, I, that was is very that again? can you type it in the chat to the yes. name of the website yes i will hold on thanks and uh, cool. i will put in the chat if you google laughter you I mean, just Google laughter yoga. You will have a lot of resources. And I know that at some point there was laughter yoga on call for 24 hours seven because from different parts of the world. If you dial in, uh, I don't know if it is still going on, but you can find laughter yoga online or on the phone anywhere you live and do it. I absolutely recommend it. Now with Zoom, it is. Yeah. There's. Uh, I will share the the, the, the uh, thank you, Kali. for with everybody. We will email that to you. But at first, I need to. Uh, so we were going to hang back for another five minutes, uh, uh, maybe ten minutes, eight minutes. So if there are any questions, uh, uh, feel free. Andrew, do you have anything to add? No, maybe maybe you should say something about our Facebook group, and we'll put oh, yeah, more yeah, yeah. materials there. Oh, very good. So our Facebook group is called ABC of Emotions During Pandemic. ABC of Emotions During Pandemic. So please sign up for that group. We'll be answering all questions and posting all uh, materials on that book, uh, on that on that Facebook page. Um, I know not everybody likes Facebook, but that is the easiest way for us to disseminate this information. Mm -hmm. All right.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the other questions. Thank you so much. This is Thank absolutely you. wonderful. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Our I love pleasure. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next week we are going to have support and communication. How to to go through this pandemic and quarantine without uh, getting into too much comfort. Thanks. Perfect. All right. Go. And it's so nice to see so many familiar faces and, and f familiar names. Uh, that is highly appreciated. Um, and your support here by you showing up is your support. And Michael, thank you very much for. Thank you, Michael. Always. Even Michael. though you don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, you know, that was a joke. I know. Thank you to all. Yeah, we, Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Stay day. well. God bless. Stay well, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Marius. You Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you very much. Well. Should we connect in seconds? Yes, sure. we will connect. And Alexandra, I will send Alexandra the, the link. Thank you. Okay.